And I finished just in time. It looks like we're going to have a storm coming up, coming off the mountain. I went ahead and uh, uh, figured I'd do the, the service. I got the, the warranty book out and I got the uh, owner's manual out. And it has the it has all the specs. Uh, one of the things I found was odd on it. It shows for the spark plug between 0.031 to 0.035, and it was at 20. So that was that was kind of strange. It's the right plug though. I checked it checked it with the book, got it back in there. I did turn the idle up a little bit. Uh, the choke adjustment looks okay. Uh, I went ahead and. Uh, it's a funny thing on this bike, it's easier to get the gas tank off than the seat. You know, they don't make the seats like they used to where you could just flip them up. Uh, but the tank came off good. Uh, there was a uh, cutout switch for the for not starting it in gear or with in neutral or with the clutch pulled in. Uh, that's plugged back in. I hit, I hit a whole bunch of connectors. Every connector I found I hit with dielectric grease. Put them all back together. Uh, the battery terminals were completely corroded. Uh, unbelievable how bad. It's really odd to take the side covers off. Uh, one of them pulls one way and the other one you have to like push it off. Uh, it's kind of kind of a little strange. But I went ahead and uh, I got that. Um, took the bottom of the carb off. Uh, it was pretty good. When I had the tank off I went ahead and dumped it. And I did. I got some stuff that was like paper in the bottom. Uh, it it just looked milky, and I think a piece of paper got in there. I don't know if it was a sticker in the tank or something, but uh, that come out. And I, I just went ahead and dumped some 40WD in there, shook it all up, and it all looks good. I got a light down there. The best I could see, I had my little uh, inspection mirror. I was shining on that and looking around. It all looks good in there now. And then I went ahead. It's raining. It's starting to rain. So I went ahead and uh, took care of that. The tires were extremely low. Uh, the back ones are supposed to be, which, depending on the weight, but for me it should be at 33. It was at 20. Front tire was at 14. Uh, I found a lot of bolts that were loose on it. Uh, it was really odd on the on the tire um, valve. Uh, little cover, a little black plastic thing. It's nice because it's got a thing to take the, uh, a built-in one to take the, the valve out. So that was kind of cool. But it had Loctite on it. And there was other bolts on the bike, no Loctite. So I had some blue Loctite and I uh, put that on the on the shock bolts because they were loose. The, the chain, I went ahead and uh, adjusted the chain. I was surprised how loose the chain bolt was. Uh, that wasn't good at all. So I went ahead and I torqued that one up to about 80 pounds. I got a torque wrench, and then I loosened the chain a little bit, and just a whole bunch of stuff. It was uh, it was a little bit of a thing to get her done, but got got her done. Uh, I don't have a, a tack that I can put around the the um, spark plug wire to attack it, but I, I got it turned up enough. It sounds like it's doing about 1,200, so hopefully hopefully that's going to work out. And when I was all done, I took it for a ride and uh, didn't seem to, wasn't, wasn't trying to stall, wasn't doing anything. I think it was starving for fuel because that, uh, it, it, I'm not kidding you, it just seemed like a piece of paper. It was all cloudy and crappy. I had some of that in there before, but uh, that's just what I ran into. So I got to get in. It's raining. And uh, this is Rick Shaw out. Well, guys, we had a quick little uh, downpour. It's lightened up quite a bit now. And the clouds are moving over, but they're they're lightening up. It's just drizzling right now. But uh, while I was in there on that uh, bike, too, uh, I checked the... Uh, uh, valves and they were dead on spec uh, exhaust and intake uh, it's really easy to check them uh, once you get the tank off there's there's plenty of room to get in there I actually have a really nice set of uh, feelers and a tool to do the adjustment I couldn't find the tool for doing the nuts but uh, they were both uh, in spec so I just went ahead and uh, buttoned her back up the one o-ring on the 
uh, exhaust which, when they put it in it was was like crushed uh, they, they pinched it wasn't leaking anywhere it was kind of like up on the top so I, I uh, pulled that one out and then when I went to put it back I put a little RTB sealant on it and then and it's a good thing to do when you're putting those back anyway because you kind of stick them to it so you don't lose anything got all that back in there and and uh, it's going good. It's going good. I took it for a ride afterwards, then I picked my sweetie up. Uh, she was up in the electric bill. We got our electric bill here. It was real, real high, I thought. Uh, highest electric bill we ever had in eight years of living here was, um, was 1500 and this one was 28 uh, now it, we are using insta hots now but we don't have the big fan uh, we don't really run a uh, fans here all the time now because the, the you know it's cool here there's a there's a big breeze coming around in the window right now it's just always breezy in this house so we'll see when other houses go up but but uh, I thought that was a little bit high now they wouldn't give us any kind of a bill they gave us a notice to shut off and claim that's the bill and they didn't tell us, you know, was this from the time it started? What, what, you know, what what is all in there? What's their charge per kilowatt hour? Nothing. We got nothing. Uh, they just show what we used. And uh, so I'm, I'm not getting that. I think that it's like a rummy dumb uh, electric company. You, there's no online payment. Um, there's, uh, I heard that there's other places where you can pay other than waiting. Uh, my wife was like a hundredth in line, and I heard there's other places, but they all charge to collect money for these people. So I, I don't know. It just seems seems kind of odd to me. So hey, what are you doing in there? No. Yeah, they're getting a little bit. They're they're cooped in now. We were out earlier, but with the rain, they don't want to be outside. So they're getting a little goofy, building their little hut, building a hut there. Yeah, being in the doghouse, but I'm glad I got the machine up. I picked, picked my wife up there, was riding on it. Uh, I hope I don't have any kind of a slow leak in the valve. I checked the valves on the tires because I had put air in that back one before, and now it needed it again. Unless the dude let some air out at the thing, I didn't see him. Uh, who, who knows? I, I'm not really happy with uh, the motor trade, though, with... Uh, you know, we're signing that paper without doing anything. So, uh, you know, that's going to get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that in. But uh, the valves, I would have heard them if they were out. Uh, I didn't notice any difference with it running with the spark plug. Uh, you know, having that where it should have been. I don't know why it would have been closed down so tight unless somebody just picked it off the shelf and figured it was set and just put it in. Uh, but you know that's a that's a pretty big difference in gap. But it, it is a good it's an iridium plug. Uh, they didn't put a cheap one in there. Uh, that's one good thing. So you know there won't be any change in that. I looked at the uh, schedule for changing it, and it was listed for uh, changing it after so many miles. Well, iridium iridium plugs last. You know. 100 grand you know they, they just last forever so I'm not I don't know what uh, you know why they want you to change it so quick but I wish I could buy the pole stars here I always put uh, pole stars in the bike they I, they do work a little bit better and help them burn a little cleaner I've seen different tests on them you know some of the tests are really uh, far-fetched and crazy but but uh, there's another good channel you guys can check it's called project farm and they have a thing on plugs. This dude, this dude uh, does all kinds of cool stuff. Check him out. It's called Project Farm on YouTube, and um, I've been subscribed to him for a couple years. And uh, it's, it's, he's got some interesting stuff on there. Plus, he debunks a lot of claims from these companies. So, but uh, that's my that's my thing on the uh, on the bike and uh, what I think of Motor Trade. Uh, I. I I think Yamaha would be really ticked at them if they found out they weren't doing the service. Because if something would happen to the bike, I have the paper that says my warranty, my first service was completed. And if it would have chowed a valve out and it would have had to been warranted, to me that wouldn't seem like that would be Yamaha's fault. That would be Motor Trade's fault. So that don't sound too good. But I'm going to go ahead and let you go. And uh, don't want to make this too long. And you all take care. And what do you guys say?